Aloha. It's July the 21st, 2021. Welcome to What Now America. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. Today's title is uh, Facebook suspended to due to poor oversight. You know, uh, the last weekend, uh, Joe Biden, President Joe Biden was, was asked by a reporter uh, what he thought about the social media platforms and their contribution to misinformation or, you know, not in misinformation about uh, the vaccine. And uh, President Biden kind of shot from the hip and he said, they're killing people. Well, on J July 19th, uh, President Biden kind of took a walk back from that and he wanted to clarify it. And he said... Um, my hope is Facebook, instead of taking it personally that Facebook is killing people, they would do something about the misinformation. President Biden then further said, Facebook isn't killing people. These 12 people out there are giving misinformation. Anyone's listening to it and getting hurt by it. It's killing people. It's bad information. So given the title of the show and given our discussions uh, in the past about Facebook and Twitter and social media platforms, um, Jay Fidel, CEO of ThinkTech Hawaii, has determined that ThinkTech's participation on Facebook should be suspended. And I'd like to go to that question, but before I do, I'd like to introduce, introduce our guests. Uh, with us today, Jay, Jay Fidel, CEO of ThinkTech Hawaii, and Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Good morning. Good morning, Tim. Jay, you took a big step. I got two questions for you. Um, the first question is, do you agree with President Biden's statement about social media that, in a sense, they are killing people as a result of the misinformation? And secondly, is um, how did you come to your decision to suspend ThinkTech Hawaii from Facebook platform? Let me address those one at a time. Um, it, was, it was sharp rhetoric, no doubt about it, when he, when he charged Facebook with killing people. I mean, it has the implications of murder, it has the implications of, um, you know, a, an affirmatively wrongful act, if you don't mind. Um, and he did walk it back in a mild-mannered kind of way, he walked it back. And, um, you know, I, I think that was because Facebook attacked him in a, in a vigorous attack over the use of the word killing people. But you think about it, uh, it was that word that was, that was troublesome. It was that word that he walked back from. And if you think about what's going on here, uh, Facebook has uh, an enormous bottom line. It has uh, really hundreds of billions of customers. Um, I say customers because it makes money on them. Um, and it has uh, a few people, it's not clear how many, who, who, are, who are doing, uh, you say misinformation, I say disinformation. Those are lies. When you say that vaccines don't work, when you say you shouldn't take a vaccine, that it's bad for you, that it's politically inadvisable to take a vaccine, that those, those are lies. And those worse than that, they're destructive lies. And we know already, just look at the map, that people are dying. So I guess, um, you know, the problem in the using the word killing was that Facebook itself did not, you know, was not the causative agent of the deaths, but it set up a platform where other people would be a causative agent of the death, and are, and are still doing that, by the way. Um, and it, it did not uh, effectively stop them from doing that. So, okay, um, uh, maybe allowed them to die instead of killing. It was, the word's too sharp, I suppose. Um, but I, you know, I wouldn't really disagree with the notion of calling them out on this. Um, they're more interested in their bottom line than, than they are in, in saving people's lives. And people are dying as a result of disinformation, lies uh, that are being spread on the Facebook platform. Okay? Um, so that's, that's the answer to your question, the first question. The second question is, why, why do I feel that way? I, I don't feel we ought to be involved in disinformation of that nature when people's lives are at stake. I look at the map. And I think the right opinion here is to say, gee whiz, if, if you don't take a vaccine and you have no good reason for it, for not taking the vaccine, um, you're, you're participating in, in a very gruesome national experience where hospitals in a number of counties and cities and states around the country are being over, overtaken by COVID. 
but they don't have the resources. It is a replay of last March and April in this country. And it is political. It's the red states. It's the Trumpers. It's, it's quite remarkable that they would do things that destroy themselves, their families, friends, communities, and all that, um, you know, intentionally, intentionally. It's, it's, you know, when did they actually learn? And in fact, uh, you know, we entertained and have included a, a commentary on that point on our Think Tech lineup, which is, um, you know, it isn't an official statement of how Think Tech feels, but it is certainly a commentary worth listening to. So what we have today is disinformation that kills people and disinformation that can be prevented. It's not that Facebook doesn't have the, the resources to stop these guys. And it's not that Facebook doesn't have the intellectual ability to stop these guys. What's interesting, I suppose, is that it's a piece that appeared on National Public Radio a couple of days ago about a fellow named Ben Shapiro who runs something called uh, Daily Wire, which is a very conservative um, website, I guess. Um, maybe, maybe it's also a, a podcast thing. And, um, and they they do what what Fox News is now doing. They say, well, you know, it's okay that you take the vaccine, but let me tell tell you all the reasons why people feel you shouldn't take the vaccine. And the net effect of all of that is to discourage people from taking the vaccine. It's very clever. It's very slick. And that was the upshot of the piece in uh, National Public Radio. Mm -hmm. um, and there are many organizations around that use Facebook to spread that kind of lie and to, uh, you know, diminish the president's message um, and the government's, the current government's message about taking the vaccine to save your life, your family's life. You know, one of our colleagues life. isn't isn't here, and that's Winston Welsh. And I just saw a, a, just a quick blurb from Winston just now, and he said, you know, Facebook is a gossip rag. It's become, you know, um, basically, uh, you know, a gossip rag. And so you're seeing real news being intermixed with gossip and real news being intermixed with um, fake news, depending on what side you're looking at it on the coin on that one. But uh, it's a mishmash of information. And do you think that Facebook has improved or Twitter has improved uh, given all the spotlight it's been under, uh, the scrutiny by Congress it's been under? Do you think they've improved somewhat uh, say from a year ago, I mean, let's let's all acknowledge their role, um, be it Facebook or Twitter or or anyone else, their role in um, false information about the election, 2016 election, and even to some extent the 2020 election. So they have a hand in that. Uh, do you think they've improved their ability to um, ferret out bad information and and prohibit it? Well, I think surely they they've improved their ability, but. I don't think they've used their improved ability. I think I think a lot of uh, misinformation and in my word disinformation uh, gets through. Um, and I, I don't I'm not satisfied that they're not doing business with the likes of Cambridge Analytica politically. Uh, they, they sold themselves. They sold themselves in the 2016 election They made millions and millions of dollars uh, selling themselves to Trump. So, and, and having a huge effect on the country. I mean, anybody with a national conscience or a shred of patriotism uh, would realize that, that the, the platform that they are providing is doing incredible damage to the country. Um, they know that people rely on Facebook. A lot of people rely on Facebook as the sole source of news. And, and when these slick guys get in there and they publish things that make you confused, that take you in the wrong direction, uh, they are affecting public opinion by the by the hundreds of millions, um, and they know that. And, and as a matter of fact, you know, I feel that they ought to really take Herculean efforts um, to stop that from happening on their platform. This is going to require a huge change in Facebook. And to answer your question, there has not been a huge change in Facebook, and they're 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 doing PR, but that it doesn't reflect the real change. You saw the uh, response they they gave uh, to uh, to President Biden when he criticized. Yeah, there was a there was a blog response which we're going to go through some of that right now. Um, yes, I saw their their response, and it, it's right out of a 
the ABCs of public relations as far as how to respond to criticism. And we're going to go through some of the points um, here in a minute. But I guess the question is, to what extent, if they don't dra dramatically change their, their approach to misinformation, what consequences should they suffer, if any? Well, first, what consequences does the public suffer? What consequences does the government suffer? What consequences does democracy suffer? You know, if people are being misinformed and disinformed, our very democracy is at risk. We've seen that. We saw it all through the Trump administration and Facebook was part of it. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm sure they realize the huge leverage they have, the huge effect they have on the national conversation and national public opinion. And so they haven't really done anything to improve that. Um, I, what was the second part of your question? Well, you've answered it. Um, you know, I mean, the consequences of what they should bear to uh, their obligation as a well, social Well, if we media. had a real Congress, if we had a real Congress, Congress would do something. Congress was investigating this and-, and Okay, uh, but you know, Facebook is international. Uh, what about other countries? Should they dive into this and say, well, if you're gonna be operating in the UK or in Canada uh, or wherever, um, you have a social responsibility. You bet. But let me add one thing that, you know, we don't want to undermine the First Amendment, or at least we don't want to violate the Constitution about having, you know, um, a government uh, control the media. We can't do that. Um, but there are ways to change it. I mean, partly, uh, I suppose, um, is the law of uh, defamation, disparagement. Um, and the law, for example, that came up in the in the voting uh, machine case, where uh, statements were made about the voting machine company, I forget its name, Cynthia will remember its name. Um, Dominion. Dominion, where they lied about Dominion, uh, and Dominion sued them for slander uh, or libel. Um, and, you know, that is one way that you hold these social media companies at bay and that you have some control. Um, another way is this section that was in, supposed to be included in the law um, that, that allows suits by the public uh, against social media companies when they lie. Um, and it makes them responsible for the information they repeat on their platform. This would be a huge step forward. But of course, we have no Congress. I say that only only because Congress hasn't done anything in years, uh, through the Trump years and especially now. Well, they, they, had, they, they did they something had their years straw ago. Vote this morning. Uh, they had their straw vote this morning, you know, a couple of hours ago uh, on, on infrastructure. And of course, the Republicans squashed it all. And it doesn't look like there's going to be an infrastructure bill. So if there's not going to be an infrastructure bill, how in the world are they going to reform the social media in a Congress which doesn't do anything? Thank you to the Republican Party, question mark, party. Okay, good point. Great, great points, Jane. Hey, Cynthia, um, before I go to you on, with a question, I'd just like to bullet some of the response from Facebook. They, they did a blog post, and um, I'm just going to highlight some of their, their defense. Uh, they basically said, don't point the finger at Facebook. Uh, they think they're a, they're a responsible corporate citizen, and their, um, their response is the following. Um, they claim they've removed 18 million instances of COVID misinformation, or as Jay would put it, disinformation. Um, now that's interesting, that's a high number. Uh, they have billions of people on Facebook and they've removed 18 million. But what that response doesn't say, and I want your reaction on this, it doesn't say how many posts are out there that they didn't catch. They just caught the 18 million, was it? 25 million? Was it 40 million? Was it 1 billion? So um, you could clearly see this as a public relations response. Uh, your reaction to that one bullet point alone from Facebook? Well, Marjorie Taylor Greene is the perfect uh, example for this question to be answered, right? It um, took her how many times of putting out misinformation specifically about vaccines? specifically about COVID, specific, specifically about the big lie. And yet now, finally, all she gets is 12 hours 
of not being able to post anything to well, me. Let's that, clarify. Let's clarify something. That's Twitter, not Facebook. Twitter, excuse me. Well, they're yeah, aren't okay. they all owned by the same people. I'm pretty no, sure. No, 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 they're not. No? no, no. Oh, I guess they're not. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's it's. But your point is well founded that uh, she has repeatedly spread disinformation about the election and has whipped up a you know millions of Americans about uh, the validity of our election versus their perceived uh, you know fraudulent fraudulent election uh, night. So um, it again, was misinformation, of- disinformation, and now she gets a 12 hour suspension from Twitter for um, her comments about, um, she said two things. She said, non-obese people probably won't get COVID and it's not dangerous if you're under 65 years of age. So those are clearly two highly erroneous messages to be putting out there. And she gets slapped on the wrist for 12 hours. Is that appropriate? No, it's not appropriate. And neither is any of the stuff that Facebook is doing. And I agree with you where you say, you know, they, they blocked all these different ones, but what about all the rest of them? And I see them on Facebook. So I know they didn't block them all. And I, I'm still friends with a lot of people from the South. And it's interesting what is on their feeds as opposed to what's on my feed or our feeds here in a blue state, right? They, I think they very specifically target people. And until they start to really address the algorithms that they use well, that's in the thing, order they, to target people, yes, then they're not doing anything as far as I'm concerned. Well, and that, thank you for saying the word algorithm because they're saying their algorithms are catching disinformation, misinformation. I, I'm not sure I buy that. I'm sure it does some of it. Um, but whatever happened to good old fashioned um, employees that would police, you know, I know it's a lot of work. They're going to have to hire a lot more police, but why don't they? They have the capital resources to do so. Why aren't they have actual human beings looking for bad content? Well, I believe that they are in the same way that Kevin McCarthy is covering his own butt. I believe they are too. I believe they are compromised and have been completely um, I, I compromised is the word, yeah, by, by not just the Trump administration, but the people that were behind a lot of that misinformation that came through in the 2016 election. So I think they are still compromised by their own complicity back then, that their hands are kind of tied as to what they can do, let alone what they want to do. We sort of already know, you know, Mark Zuckerberg's um, uh, you know, level of uh, not wanting to compromise himself by uh, and being greedy. And obviously, because he has made so much money and done so many things that have showed us who he is and that he's not trustworthy. Okay. Hey, we just got a question coming in. We really do appreciate questions that come in while we're doing this show live stream. And for you, Cynthia, the question is, how does Facebook determine what is true and what is false? How do they, how, how do they go about it, doing it? And is there a better way? Yes, there's a better way. <laughs> it's called the Fairness Doctrine. It was in place from 1949 until 1987. And they need to put it back in place so that news is news and social is social. And when we can separate those two, then perhaps we can make some headway. But I think until we separate the two, we're not going to get very far because people's opinions are people's opinions. But the opinions that get, you know, retweeted or or not retweeted, but reposted and reposted and reposted end up becoming true. It's like the lie that gets told over and over and over becomes true. It's the same sort of thing with this. So until we make news news and there's consequences for people like Tucker Carlson and John Hannity and Laura Ingram and the whole Fox News network, until there's consequences with the fairness doctrine where because we could catch them a ton of times. And well, let's go to Jay's point that you can't get oh. anything done in Congress. How's that going to get approved? Um, uh, well, I, I, let, me, let me jump in on that. Yeah, it's, it's us stars. <laughs> yeah. Sorry it's, about that, uh, I didn't mean to uh, stop the band. Uh, you know, but, <laughs> forget about Congress on this. Forget about it. it you know, it's just a waste of time. Uh, so many of the initiatives that we'd like to see passed are, are going to be 
are being killed and delayed out of existence um, just to make Joe Biden look bad, you know, for the next election. That's why the Republicans are doing that. They, they have no ideology, no agenda, except to make them look bad. So forget Congress. So the question is, you know, who speaks on this? Well, the answer, Tim, Cynthia, we speak on it. Um, you know, we're, we're a small fry. We're just streaming, streaming uh, video, but, um, but we we're consistent and we take the position um, that if, if they want to create a platform for disinformation and not take any steps to remove it or stop it, uh, we don't want any part of that. And, and um, you know, uh, we, we should and we did um, suspend them as far as submitting content to them and mm -hmm. showing Facebook on our systems. Um, and we'll wait. We'll see what they do. The, the, the ball's in their court. But the ball's also in, uh, you know, and maybe they'll clean it up. I wouldn't hold my breath, but maybe they'll clean it up. And so how are they affected? Well, they're affected by public opinion. And it has to be guys like us and maybe a, a lot of other people who would say, Facebook, you know, you're off, you're off base here. You have to take affirmative steps. Now, <clears throat> so it won't be Congress. It probably won't be government. It'll be well, the people. Well, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. What's to prevent President Biden from taking a page out of Donald Trump's book? And that is the power of the executive order. Yeah. What's to prevent President Biden from saying, from here on in, we're going to reinstitute the fairness doctrine that was in place for many years, that was deemed legal. It was only by politics that it was um, re redacted, if you will, uh, erased. Uh, what prevents Joe Biden from doing that? Can he? Well, I think, uh, Cynthia, you know more, but wasn't the fairness doctrine a statute? Well, I can tell you because I've got it right here. <laughs> well, it doesn't tell me as much as I'd like to know about this, but um, it was in 1949 is when it was put in. Uh, and it required broadcasters to present both sides of political or controversial issues in an equal and honest way. So we well, can- that was the equal time. To okay, well, yeah, I'm not sure that, I'm not sure that balanced reporting is what it used to be. If, if what you're talking about is, quote, balanced reporting, then for every every truth there is a lie, and we have to report both sides. Um, that's what some people would argue, and uh, the problem is they have no basis for arguing their side of it because it's not true. Um, so I, I'm not sure that's a solution. Let me let me go to the solution that I have in my mind. Okay, so it's the people, and the people have to stand up. The people have to say we're not going to play on a platform that that um, you know that 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 broadcasts this information. It's not good for us, it's not good for the country, not you know, to have lies being propagated this way or the world. <clears throat> so we're we're out of here uh, or we're gonna complain until you change your system. Now, <clears throat> the system, okay, actually we have a show this afternoon about artificial intelligence um, and uh, ethics. Um, and I think there's a, ro there's a role for that. And Mark Zuckerberg knows there's a role for that. I'm sure he uses AI in the way he propagates whatever he's doing and the way he operates his platform. Um, remember, you know, even in the uh, uh, international relations and surveillance business, the way it works is you look for keywords, keywords in email, keywords in any kind of text document, keywords in the spoken word or the video word. And if you find a combination of words, Using AI, you can determine that this is something that hits on truth or hits on lies. You have to program it. And this is always dangerous to have the government program this kind of thing. Um, but if Mark Zuckerberg took it upon himself to program it and say, look, uh, people who are uh, downplaying the vaccine, we're not going to let them on the, on the platform. We're not going to do it. If we lose money, that's OK. We're not going to do it. This is an ethical, moral question. We have AI to identify every time somebody is doing disinformation on that issue, we're gonna stop it. But here up, we're, we're going to, we're gonna refer this to a committee and he can afford to have a committee. He can afford to have thousands of committees and the committee is gonna determine human people, uh, whether this is, you know, disinformation. And if the individual who put the disinformation in uh, has a has a problem with the result of that committee, 
he can appeal it, okay? But it doesn't get on the platform uh, until it gets processed that way. If the AI lets it in at first, fine. If the AI stops it, it goes through this process um, and, and it doesn't get on the platform without being cleared. Uh, and so, you know, I think this can be done in-house. I think if, um, if, if I were Mark Zuckerberg or if Mark Zuckerberg were an ethical, moral guy, not, not so interested yeah, in, in power and money, uh, he would do exactly this. He has the resources. He has he does the funding. Have the resources. Yeah. He has the technology. He has the people. Why doesn't he do this? It wouldn't be 18 million. It would be many more than that. Yeah. And it would be you know, more think, sophisticated than that. You know, if you think about it, college professors are doing this all the time to make sure their students don't plagiarize. They have that software and it's readily available. Um, There's all the algorithms we were just talking about. It's a simple algorithm that they could put on the whole thing and it would do exactly what you're talking about. But you also said that my, if Mark Zuckerberg was had some integrity, but we kind of already know that he doesn't. And that's what I was meaning to say before. But, you know, just look at what he did to his partner when he first started his business. He, yeah. you know, ripped him off. He does not have integrity. So we cannot expect him to do it. I hate to say this, but I think you're you're right in the sense, Jay, that it's up to the people. We just need to pull our our um sponsor our our involvement in Facebook. And when that happens, we'll be going better. Yeah. But this is what I don't well, know. Maybe it'll well, improve. Maybe I it'll improve. Say, well, well, you know, for example, he's got stockholders, he's got directors. You yeah. know, if they're if they're independent thinkers, if they entertain, you know, rational and patriotic thought, they will say to him, Mark, you can't you can't run the company this way. You have to do better. And he will have to do better or lose his job uh, within the company. This is not government. These are the individuals who will participate in the corporate structure. Well, I would say consequences is a bigger consequences is a bigger stick and the consequences of breaking up Facebook because it's a monopoly of sorts. That would be a bigger deterrent than uh, him not getting on the bandwagon with disinformation. Right. So, I mean, right now, I mean, I, Jay, I agree with both points you made is AI would be a nice little helpful tool. But in addition, he's got to spend a lot more money on employees to come up with these committees and to just be on the hunt, not just, a, you know, not just a technology um, solution, because I think he's implementing that already. He's, he's claiming that his algorithms are, is ferreting out all this bad information. And you and I both know that's not the case. Yeah, we got to do better. He's got to do better. And your point about breaking it up is very interesting because I was going to tell you before that, you know, a year or two ago, there were hearings in Congress about, you know, being big tech being too big, right? And they were considering this issue uh, and they were asking him questions. But, you know, it, it's kind of interesting that the Congress doesn't have a great ability to ask probative questions. They have these hearings and they all make political speeches. They don't know how to ask a question, so they got no answers. So then the, the hearings were suspended for a year or more. Um, so the staff was to go back and do some research and find out what questions would be probative. Um, I think they came back, but I don't think they did anything. What Congress has to do, if it's going to entertain the antitrust approach on this, it has to know what it's talking about. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's like what Fauci said to uh, uh, was it uh, Jim Paul, uh, Paul, uh, Paul? Yeah. And yeah. Paul. Yeah. Yesterday he said, Senator, you don't know what you're talking about. Yes. We have to have senators who know what they are talking about. <laughs> and, 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 and then maybe they could entertain some kind of breakup uh, strategy. Uh, that would be hard politically. Uh, make no mistake about it. Uh, and as I said before, there is no Congress. Um, but assuming there was, that would be an interesting approach to break them up and to foment some competition. I read the other day that there is actually a small company that is entering the field on, on Google searches, and they are head on in competition with Google on searches. And I welcome that. I think that's good for the country. It's good for tech, good for politics and so forth. Um, good for us. And, and the same thing could and should happen with, uh, with Facebook. And in a funny way, Cynthia, you know, uh, Twitter is a different company. It's owned and managed by different people. Some people think that the management is better at Twitter, uh, and I would be included in that. 
Um, but bottom line is we need competition in social media because if we don't have competition, we have effectively a monopoly on public opinion. This is very threatening to our democracy. Yeah. Hey, we, we've run out of time, so I'm going to go around for last comments. But I want your last comments to take into um, this last thing that I'm starting to watch. And that is in the last day or so, Sean Hannity has stepped up to the plate. He is full-throated endorsed vaccines, which I've never seen him do before. And Mitch McConnell just recently um, full-throated uh, encouraged people to get uh, vaccinated. Um, so your last comments, maybe you could entertain what happened? What's the turnaround? What prompted uh, some uh, talking heads on Fox News to start getting serious about not putting out disinformation, misinformation, and what prompted uh, Mitch McConnell to step up to the podium and the microphone? Cynthia. Well, I think that it's that their constituents are dying and getting sick. And so, you know, they don't want to come out the other side and have people go, well, why did you tell us to take it? You know, when they're, it's their people that are dying now because they're the ones who are vaccine hesitant. So okay. I think that's part of it. Um, I'd like to say one last thing about Facebook as far as, you know, yeah, what they're doing about the vaccines and all this stuff is one thing, but what about their involvement in propagating the January 6th insurrection? They put violent stuff all over the place and you cannot tell me that their algorithms did not know. There's just no way they didn't know it was happening, yet they did nothing about it. And that's what I'd like to see addressed even more so than anything else. Sure, they, you know, they are trying to look like they're doing better now. They've, you know, their vaccine hesitancy has gone up by 50% and blah, 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 since they've changed their ways. <sighs> you know, there's still people talking about J January 6th, supporting it, thinking it wasn't bad, talking the big lie all over the place. So why suddenly are we going to look at them just for vaccine issues? I think we need to look at them across the board. They are a danger to our country. Okay. Appreciate those words. Uh, Jay, oh, your I'm last proud. thoughts? And I'm proud of Jay for doing this and, and saying no more and taking a stand against it. Um, I, I'm very proud of you. Good job, Jay. Well, I hope they change. I mean, it's certainly possible. Um, it should happen within the corporate structure um, and without the need for government intervention. That would be better. But let me say, the, the reason that uh, Fox News, my reaction to that, your question, Tim, mm -hmm. number one is uh, it appears that a lot of those guys are taking the vaccine. And it's really kind of strange to, on the one hand, be taking the vaccine and let that get out into the press. And on the other hand, discourage people. That, that's one factor. Don't know if that's the, the driving factor. Another factor is they want to build credibility, okay, so that they can do outrageous things on other issues, you know, such as the big lie, for example, Cynthia, because uh, they keep on doing that. Um, and you know, the, the third possibility that I that I've been thinking about is, uh, you know, you, you what you have here is a slick operation. It's, it's like the operation that was reported um, on national public radio with regard to the, the daily, uh, the daily uh, wire. wire. Um, they, they don't necessarily come out and uh, tell you that vaccines are bad, but they, they give you, for every time they say, eh, you should take a vaccine, they give you some kind of tap about how there are very serious consequences there are side effects that could kill you. Uh, and they talk about mom and pop who, did, who decided they weren't going to do it. So there's all these side stories and you're left confused at best. And you're left wondering, you know, whether you should take their advice when they give you this very soft advice that maybe a vaccine would be a good idea. And so it's deniability, you know, we never said that it was a bad idea, but we gave you all the reasons you could consider in coming to your own conclusion. It's very slick. It's the yeah. new approach. I, I heard the new Tucker approach Carlson of disinformation. I heard Tucker Carlson say just two days ago, "It's your right as an American to ask, you know, solid questions about these things before they force you to take a vaccine." Well, no one's forcing anybody to take a vaccine yet, 
Uh, number two is um, he's using the, the red, white, and blue mom and apple pie to say that you, you, you as an American should be questioning everything. Yeah, and that should prevent liberty. you from taking a vaccine. Yeah, this is one other thing I want to mention, and that's and that a reality that we, we observers of the Trump administration should understand by now is if you say that it's just a sniffle back in March of 2020, and then later, you know, you evolve off that point. There's a very substantial number of your base that is looking for signals. And when you first said it was a sniffle, that's the signal they caught. And everything you said after that, to the contrary, they don't take seriously. They believe what you're really telling them is it's a sniffle. Yeah. Um, th this is the theory of, my theory anyway, of momentum information. You make your statement at first, um, and you get, you get people to believe that's how you really feel. And then when you change it under pressure, they don't change their minds. They think today it's still a sniffle and they die over it. Um, so it's the theory of these guys at Fox News. Yeah, they're changing their tone. But the guys in their base and Trump's base who have heard the, the original message still believe the original message. And I think we're watching that phenomenon in public relations happening right now. OK. Can I well, add we, thing, Tim? Can I just well, add we run out of time, but very quickly. Very quickly, it is a quote from Trump himself. Very over quickly. The vaccine thing. People are refusing to take the vaccine because they don't trust Biden's administration. They don't trust the election results, and they certainly don't trust fake news, which is refusing to tell the truth. So that's behind all of it. All right. right? All right. We have one guy behind all of it just blowing everything up anyway. All righty. Hey. Great discussion, great points made. Uh, thank you very much, Jay Fidel. Great point, Cynthia. Cynthia, Lee Sinclair, join us next Wednesday at 11 o'clock for What Now America. I'm Tim Apicello. I, I can never say my name correctly when I'm doing this show. I'm Tim Apicello, your host, and we will see you next week. Aloha.